Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and in this video we're gonna learn how to animate custom shapes, and we do that using something called animatable data. So as promised, this is the third video in this playlist that revolves around building custom shapes. And if you are just joining, I highly recommend watching the previous two videos before this one, because two videos back we learned how to build custom shapes with straight lines, in the last video, we learned how to build custom shapes with curved lines. And in this video, we're learning how to take those custom shapes and actually animate them. So again, the code in this video is not going to actually be super difficult or super advanced, but understanding why it all works together is definitely an advanced challenging topic. So I hope you guys are enjoying this and I hope you guys can actually get some use out of this in your production apps. So at the end of this video, I would love to hear some feedback on if you guys think these custom shapes are useful and if you plan on actually implementing them in your apps. And we are back in our Xcode project. So for the code in this video, let's create a new file. Let's right click the navigator, new file. It will be a Swift UI view. And let's call it animatable data bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. All right, click resume once you're inside. And I'm gonna start by adding a Z stack to the screen. Let's put the text inside the Z stack. You can keep it with hello world for now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is on the Z stack, I'm gonna add an on appear call. And on appear, we're gonna do something with animation. Let's do animation.linear with a duration of maybe two seconds and let's call dot repeat forever. Uh, let's then open the brackets and then we need something to toggle when we want to animate. So at the top here, let's do at state private var animate of type bool and we'll set it equal to false. And then in here we will call animate dot toggle. I've done several animation videos in my earlier boot camps where we covered you know what this is and what repeat forever is and right now we're just going to have this animate boolean basically toggle true false forever and for now instead of a text let's just add a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of maybe 30 and i'm going to give this a frame with a width of maybe 250 a height of 250 and we don't need the alignment all right, if I click resume on the canvas, we should get a nice rounded rectangle in there. And what we're going to do is just animate the corner radius here. So we're going to say animate question mark 30, otherwise zero. And if I click play up here, this on up here should start toggling and then the corner radius on our rectangle should be animating. So it goes down to zero and then up to 30. We can even make it like 60 to exaggerate it a little bit. And we go from 60 down to zero and then back to 60. So this is very simple so far. All we're doing is animating the corner radius. And this is really cool that we can animate this rounded rectangle shape and we can actually change the shape so easily. But under the hood, the path of this shape is actually changing with animatable data. Now, Apple has, Apple has given us this rounded rectangle API that does this for us. But the question is, what if we had maybe a rectangle on our screen, but we only wanted to animate one single corner? Well, right now, this default around a rectangle in this corner is we can do it on all four, but we don't have the power of actually doing it on one specific corner. So as an example of using animatable data, let's start by trying to do this, but with only one corner animating. Let's create a struct and let's call this rectangle with single corner uh, animation. Let's make this conform to shape and we will open the brackets. And in here, we're gonna add a path, of course. Let's start by just making a rectangle or basically a square. So let's add path for path in. And we're gonna go path.move. We're gonna move to dot zero. Then we're gonna go path.add line. And let's go to CG point. And let's do rect dot max x rect dot min y. I'm just going to copy and paste this two more times. This second add line is going to go to max x and max y. 
And this third one is going to go to min x and max y. All right, if I put this rectangle with single corner animation shape onto the screen, so let's do that instead of the rounded rectangle here. I'm going to comment out my rounded rectangle and let's click resume. We're not animating anything yet, but we should have a square on the screen, and that's what we have here. All right, we're going to start by adding the corner radius that we want that corner to have. We're going to use the bottom right corner just for example's sake. So let's say var corner radius of type CG float. And we're going to pass this in, but for right now, let's just set it as uh, equal to maybe 60, just so we can see it. And what we're going to do is basically first just add a corner radius to this corner here. So we're going to start at the top left, we're going to draw a line to the top right, and then instead of drawing a line all the way to the corner here, we're going to draw it to the corner minus the radius minus the corner radius that we want. So the y here is actually going to be max y minus corner radius. And then after that, we actually want to go to the other side of the corner radius. So I'm going to copy this add line here and paste another one below. And this one is going to go to the max x minus corner radius and the max y. So now you guys can start to see where this corner is going to actually go. So we've drawn down to here and then we went to here. And now all we need to do is add a curve on this corner. I'm going to call here path.addArc. Let's use the same completion that we've been using. I'm going to put all of these on separate lines. So, so where do we want the center of the arc to be? We want it to be right in the center of this diagonal line here. So that's actually going to be the rec dot max y minus corner radius and the rec dot max x minus corner radius. So I'm going to add a CG point here. Let's make it the x minus corner radius and let's make it the y minus corner radius. The radius of course is going to be the size of the corner radius. The start angle. The start angle we can just do angle of degrees of zero and the end angle we can just do angle of uh, degrees of 360. I don't think it really matters as long as we get this part of the curve here. Uh, and then clockwise we're just going to set it to false. So as you can see now we successfully added one single rounded corner to our square and this by itself is useful in your app if you need just one rounded corner. The question is how can we actually animate this corner? So someone who's never done this before would very simply think we could just change this corner radius uh, and it would be animating perfectly based on the value of the corner radius. So if I delete this and make this part of the initializer, every time we initialize a rectangle with single corner animation, it's going to ask us what we want that corner to be. So let's just do animate, question mark. If it's animate, let's do 60, otherwise zero. And if I click resume, on a pier, this animation should go off and it should start toggling and it should start animating. So I'm going to click play on the simulator and you'll see that it is not actually animating. And someone who's never done this before might get stuck here and be wondering why, even though we are changing the corner radius with the animation, right? Why is the actual path not animating? And the short answer basically is that this path here, this is just a very explicit path. This is not an animated path. So this function returns a path. There is no property wrapper on this path. There is no at state for this path. So the view doesn't know that this path is going to be changing. Right now, this is just a function that gives us the shape as is. So what we need to do inside this shape is basically just confirm what data inside this path is actually going to be animating. And we can do that very simply by adding animatable data. So I'm gonna, in here, I'm gonna look for the variable called animatable data. And empty animatable data, I think, is the default when the shape has no animatable data. But this shape is going to have data. And of course, that data is going to be of type CG float. So let's change it to a CG float. And let's open the brackets. And inside this animatable data, we need to add some custom logic for 
what this returns when we get it and what this returns when we set it. So let's first start with get and open the brackets. So get means anytime you're gonna call animatable data, what value do you want it to return? So when, so when the shape tries to get this animatable data, what should it actually get? It should get the current value of the corner radius. So we're gonna get the corner radius here. And then we need a property for set. And so here, when the shape sets what this animatable data should be, we can customize it to do other things. And what we're gonna do is, when we set animatable data, we're also just gonna set the value of the corner radius. So here, we're gonna set the corner radius equal to the new value, the new value being the new value inside this animatable data variable. So all we need to do is add this get and this set. And I'm gonna actually just make these one line just to make the code look a little cleaner. And simple as that, I'm going to click resume on the canvas. I'm gonna click play on the live preview and just like magic, we now actually have a animating round corner. So it's kind of funny how this little bit of code is all we really needed here to make this shape actually animate. There's definitely more to read up on animatable data, but I just wanted to introduce you guys to this. Before we go, I wanna add one more quick example of animating a shape here, just to get more comfortable with this. So below here, let's create another struct. Let's call it Pac-Man. Let's make it conform to shape and open the brackets. Every shape needs a path. And every path, we're gonna do path for path in. And let's start with a very simple Pac-Man shape. So we're gonna go path.move, CG point. Let's go move right to the center, so uh, rect.midx, rect.midy. Let's go path.addArc. Let's put the center also in the center. Let's add a radius, a start angle, a end angle, and a clockwise. Radius, let's do uh, the rect.height divided by two. Start angle, let's do angle. Degrees, let's do maybe negative 20. Over here, let's do angle degrees of positive 20, and then clockwise, let's do false. Let's put Pac-Man on the screen. So I'm gonna comment out the rectangle here and just put Pac-Man. Click or zoom, see what it looks like. Let's actually make this starting, let's actually make this starting angle uh, positive 20 and this ending angle, let's do 360 minus 20. So now we have our little Pac-Man shape here, and of course we wanna animate it. So we're gonna animate it by changing this 20 degrees here. So at the top here, let's add a var called offset amount of type, uh, maybe CG float. And we're gonna also add animatable data, just like we did in the last shape. This will be a CG float, and we're gonna add a get, which will get the offset amount. And we'll add a set, which will set the offset amount equal to the new value. Then we just take this offset amount, let's make that the degrees here. Let's make it the degrees here. And now let's just change this offset amount when we initialize it. So up here, I'm gonna call uh, animate, question mark 20, otherwise zero. Let's click resume one more time, and let's click try again. And I did something wrong here. Looks like uh, this actually needs to be a double, so let's make the offset amount a double, and the animatable data a double. I think animatable data works best with any types of numbers. I don't think you can use Booleans here. I think integers, doubles, CG floats are definitely best. Uh, but let's click try again. And hopefully we get uh, this really cool Pac-Man. And he obviously does not bite this slow. So let's change the uh, animation here to maybe ease in out. And just like that, we have a perfect working version of Pac-Man. You would have thought there was more to it, but in SwiftUI, all it is is literally a couple of lines and you have a perfect Pac-Man simulation. 
There's obviously much more you guys can do with animatable data and customizing and, and creating your own custom shapes and then animating them, but I think this was a good starting point on how you can approach at least animating your custom shapes. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, like, and comment below. Again, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I am Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.